I thank the ranking member. And um, my question will recognize myself for five minutes. Uh, Dr. Sanders, uh, Mr. Rosner, uh, this question is directed to you. So uh, in my opening statement, I referenced the fact that Fannie and Freddie are exempt from this 5 percent risk retention. Um, we are currently, you know, we just it, uh, recently wrote a check, or the Treasury, the American taxpayer, uh, is, is uh, in just in the last, uh, last week for over $8 billion for Fannie and Freddie. This was after um, we are we're in for many, many multiples of that currently. But what problems do you foresee with Fannie and Freddie being exempt from, from this risk retention rule? How do, you for, how do you foresee that playing out? Yeah, at a time where we hear Treasury and the administration talk about reducing the role of uh, FHA, uh, Fannie and Freddie, and uh, trying to revive private markets to exempt Fannie and Freddie from the risk retention rule will actually only support and enhance their dominance in the market and will create an arbitrage where private lenders will have a, uh, a, an enhanced uh, or, or a necessary um, situation where they end up having to sell to the enterprises. Why? Because the enterprises actually are considered already to fully retain the risk. Therefore, they don't have to play in the risk retention game. No, no. I mean, but why would private entities not be able to compete with that? Oh, because private entities would end up having an unfair economic disadvantage of having to compete by holding a 5 percent position against the enterprises who don't. Okay. Thank, thank you. Dr. I Sanders. would uh, clarify that. I, I agree with what Josh is saying. But it is uh, it's, it's the old crowding out theme again. Once you exempt Fannie, Freddie, and the FHA from risk retention rules, the originators or securitizers, if they are forced to hold this and they have to make a decision between holding 5 percent or getting rid of it and giving it to Fannie, Freddie, and the FHA, we have made it a very clear path and an easy path just to keep Freddie, Fannie, and the FHA at 95 percent market share. And I think that goes against what the administration has said uh, they wanted to do. And I think this is, I almost, oh, almost call this the uh, uh, Fannie, Freddie Enabling Act as opposed to Dodd-Frank. Mr. Marco, do you agree with these sentiments? Well, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as one of the regulators as the responsible, of as, the regu Freddy. as the overseer and one of the regulators responsible for implementing this, uh, putting out this proposed rule, if I could just clarify a couple of things, and I'm, I'm sorry this strikes folks as, as technical, but it is the way we view it. Fannie and Freddie are not exempt from risk retention. The proposed rule stipulates that because Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac actually retain 100 percent of the credit risk in the mortgages that Actually, to correct you there, the American taxpayer has 100 percent of the credit risk. Yes, sir. And <laughs> I'm, 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 I am incredibly mindful of that. Yes. Um, and we are working very hard to protect the American taxpayer's yeah, you investment in, in, in these companies. But the, but the rule, this, what the statute requires is for the securitizers, the issuer of an asset-backed security, to retain a portion of the credit risk. And the regulators have simply acknowledged in the proposed rule that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, when they issue a, a mortgage-backed security, they are retaining 100 percent of the credit risk. To the extent that one wants to see their portfolio begin to shrink and, and reduce reduce their footprint, forcing them to buy back or hold 5 percent of the securities that they issue is actually going to inflate their balance sheet. And while I am very supportive of the notion that we need to move the U.S. mortgage market away from one that is so much reliant upon government-related entities, I am not sure risk retention is the most effective or practical means for starting to move the government out and restore private sector participation. What is? Um, I think that uh, having the Congress of the United States take up a, a comprehensive housing finance reform where we can figure out what the ultimate resolution of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are going to be is part of it. But the other thing is to, to really get private capital to uh, come in, come back into the U.S. mortgage market and be willing to um, evaluate price and undertake mortgage credit risk. Those investors, that private capital was going to want to know what are the rules of the road and what is the long-term role of the U.S. government in the housing market. And they're going to want, those investors are going to want clarity about where the government is limiting its involvement and just what is being really put back as available for the private sector so that it is not competing with entities that are operating with uh, direct support uh, and involvement from the U.S. government. Uh, Mr. Rosner, uh, back to you. In terms of the QRM. 
Um, currently, uh, private mortgage insurance uh, is, is not a part of the, this solution or this uh, definition uh, for under QRM. Uh, can you discuss, it? would that have a negative impact, do you think? Look, the, the private mortgage insurance industry has demonstrated that it offered no economic value in risk transfer. Uh, they, were, they were used largely by, uh, because of a, a, the 92 Act, which required the, uh, the 80 plus LTV to get credit enhanced uh, on the enterprises. In the private market, they haven't really been used. They have been not demonstrated to have been effective in underwriting. Their rescission rates on claims have been extraordinarily high, and uh, most of them are operating under waivers with their State insurance regulators. Uh, so the notion that uh, private mortgage insurance has really helped the situation in any way I think is fallacious, and I don't think there is any evidence of that as witnessed by, uh, by the economic performance of their uh, insured loans relative to uh, a broader pool of loans. My time has expired, but Ms. Radcliffe, it looks like you are you, you're interested in answering that question. Well, I would mention that the uh, MI companies through the end of 2010 paid $22 billion in claims to the GSEs, which is 14 percent of the taxpayer uh, payments up to that point in time. So there is some economic benefit um, in that capital source to the market. Ms. Uh, that was with a, with a rescission rate that was uh, across the industry north of 20 percent at this point, uh, it seems. And uh, you are forgetting that they collected premiums. So really it was a return of, not a return on, uh, that insured premium. Thank you. Uh, I recognize Mr. Quigley for five minutes.